What's up everybody? Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are going to be making one of the greatest breads of all time and that is cheesy garlic bread. So let's dive into this recipe. All right everybody, let's make this absolutely stunning cheesy garlic bread. It is super simple to make and I'm gonna show you how to do it. And just look at this, with all of these nice ingredients with the parsley, garlic, cheese, and butter, it will be very hard to mess this recipe up. All right, so today I'm gonna to be using a fresh baked French loaf that I picked up from my grocery store. You can by all means make this from scratch if you want to, but I see nothing wrong with using a store-bought loaf for this recipe. So I'm just taking my knife and cutting straight down the middle of this bread until we get it cut in half. I recommend a knife like this that's got a nice long blade and that's serrated because it'll cut through bread very easily. Now, let's start making our garlic butter. All right, so I've gone ahead and peeled four cloves of fresh garlic here, which is what you're gonna need for this recipe. Now I'm gonna take my garlic and just cut it up into nice thin circles for each clove. Typically for my Chinese cooking on this channel, I mince my garlic pretty fine so it gets nice and cooked in the oil, but for this recipe, I'm leaving it a little bit chunkier. This is the step where I would typically give my garlic a very fine mince, but I'm just gonna go over a couple of times to break it down a little bit, but still leaving it nice and chunky. Now, grab yourself a small pan that you're gonna place on the stove over medium heat, and we're going to be adding a stick of salted butter to this. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is that I'm going to actually brown my butter, and the reason for this is to get a bunch of nice caramelized milk solids in this butter, and it's gonna add a ton of kind of golden and toasty flavor to this garlic bread. Once your butter has become foamy and has kind of sat for a minute, we're going to go ahead and add in all of our minced garlic. Now you could go ahead and just soften this butter and immediately fold the raw garlic in, but this is gonna do two things. As I mentioned, the milk solids and the butter are gonna get nice, caramelized, and toasted, and this garlic is gonna get kind of toasted as well in this butter by cooking it, and it's gonna make it more buttery and take off a lot of that harsh edge. In short, I'm just trying to maximize flavor in this butter here. So since we've skipped out on making homemade bread, I figured I would make my own compound butter by browning this butter first with this garlic. I will admit that this is kind of a pro move to brown your butter because it takes a little bit of skill to not burn the garlic or the butter itself because both of them can burn relatively quickly. So once you notice that your butter is starting to take on a darker brown color, immediately take this off of the heat because it will continue to cook with some carryover heat. And if you've done this correctly, you should have nice toasty garlic bits with all of these caramelized milk solids in the bottom, which is going to maximize the flavor of this garlic bread. Also, if you've seen my first video on YouTube by chance, you know that I highly recommend scraping out all of these little brown bits out of the bottom of your pan so you get all of that flavor. I've placed this in a heat proof mug and you can see that what is left behind is literally liquid gold. So I'm gonna go ahead and carry this to the refrigerator to start solidifying. While our butter is solidifying, I'm going to prep this parsley. This is not Italian parsley, just normal parsley. And you don't really need this, but it does make it Instagram worthy for a final product. So I'm just chopping off the softer end here because I don't wanna have to deal with those stems placing it into the center of my cutting board and a pro move is to roll it up and then finally dice it. It's much easier to get fine chops of this parsley by doing this. Once your parsley has been finely diced, you can go ahead and move on to the cheese. Today I'm going to be using Colby Jack cheese as well as part skim mozzarella with low moisture. This Colby Jack cheese is going to add some flavor that the mozzarella can't add and it's still a really nice melting cheese. And then you all know that mozzarella is perfect for melting, which is why it is perfect for putting on pizza. Now I'm going to be taking my cheese grater and the cool thing about this cheese grater is that it will actually catch and measure my cheese. So we're going to be needing one cup of this Colby Jack cheese and I'm using the larger holes to grate this because I feel like that's the best option here as well as one cup of mozzarella cheese. Now I'm just gonna take my cheese and dump it into a large bowl where I can kind of separate it and mix it together with my fingers. This will immediately go into the refrigerator so this cheese doesn't kind of melt and stick together and remain kind of fluffy. Now to season our garlic butter, which is firming up in the refrigerator, I'm going to be taking one teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, which I think this is an appropriate place to use this, half a tablespoon of basil, 
and finally half of a tablespoon of dried oregano. Go ahead and give this a quick mix with a fork and grab your butter out of the refrigerator. At this point your butter should have come together just a little bit and it's okay if it's almost solid here, you just want it to be soft enough to mix these ingredients in. So go ahead and add your spice mixture and grab that same fork and give this a quick mix. Adding these dry ingredients should make your butter kind of come together a little bit better. If it is really runny I would place it back in the refrigerator for a minute to kind of help solidify everything. Now I'm just going to be taking my butter and placing it over some plastic wrap and slowly forming it into a log with my hands. Now I'm just going to roll this up and kind of twist it together almost like a Tootsie Roll candy if you know what I'm talking about. I'll put the image on the screen to give you an idea but you're just going to roll this up so it gets nice and tight and kind of conforms to the plastic wrap. Now I'm going to place this back in the refrigerator just so it gets a little bit more firm. At this point my compound butter is being held together nicely but it's still soft enough to spread so let's make our garlic bread. Alright so I've taken my french bread and placed it on a parchment lined baking sheet and I've taken my compound butter and broken that down into halves for each half of this loaf of bread and I'm just portioning it along the loaf here allowing it to have a little bit of butter in each spot then I've just spread that out evenly across the bread. From here I'm just going to be taking a handful of cheese at a time and kind of just placing it down the length of the bread. You really want to place this cheese edge to edge that way when you're cooking this bread in the oven for an extended period of time the edges don't get really brown. So as you can see I've placed my cheese to the very edge of this bread and now we're going to bake it for 10 to 12 minutes at 400F until it comes out nice and golden brown. Now I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of that fresh parsley that we finally chopped up earlier and this doesn't need a lot, just enough to add a little bit of color to our garlic bread. Alright everybody, the cheesy garlic bread is finished and complete. Look at this, absolutely stunning. Alright, moment of truth here, it smells absolutely amazing, so let's give this a quick try. That right there is garlic bread on another dimension. All right, so here's my thing with making homemade bread. I feel like that bread that I just ate is just as good as what you can make homemade. So if you're saving time in that area, I think that browning the butter and throwing the garlic in and then making that kind of compound butter all in one step, that extra mile is going to add this special bit of like elevated flavor that you're not gonna get at some sort of store-bought garlic bread. That being said, I think it would still be amazing if you just threw the garlic and butter together while it was softened, but that right there is something special. And you can make the butter a day ahead of time. All right guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like on it because a lot of time and effort went into making this video. And consider subscribing because we're cooking good food here every single week. And with that being said, I will see you all on the next one.